Today we got a good episode uh, with a couple of my boys from AI Driller. We got Marat and Richard. What's up, guys? What's up, man? We had a wild uh, night last night in Houston with 100 mile an hour winds. Uh, you guys, Richard, y'all drove in from uh, Fort Worth yesterday. Y'all were there with us in Energy Tech Night. Yeah, from Fort Worth to, yeah. to Austin to... Uh... Damn near hurricane tornado. I was say y'all probably y'all probably got in. Like, good thing you got in. So the power just cut on just before the episode. Yeah, good thing y'all got in before. Are you sure fixing, yeah, uh, we oof? literally got in right when uh when the rain started. And was, I, I didn't even know anything was happening until a little alarm went off and tornado. I was like, well, shit. <laughs> it got it got nasty pretty quick. But yeah, so I woke up this morning and. Marat said he had to drive through his neighbor's yard to get out of his don't house. Don't make it public because I don't want people <laughs> oh, to see yeah. the grass. <laughs> now we on that. Your neighbor's gonna, <laughs> your neighbor's gonna watch this. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's who it was. <laughs> uh, but we, uh, yeah, we had no cell phone service over in Katy, and so um, I don't know if the office is gonna have power of the studio, and fortunately it did. So we get to record today. So I'm excited to have you guys here. Um, Let's open this up real quick. Just tell me 40,000 foot view, high high level, what is AI driller? And then we'll start diving into it. No, great question. So AI is uh, stands for all inclusive. So we are one-stop shop for software for drilling and completions. What it means like it's, you know, we in operations, we have a lot of different softwares for well planning for anything else. So AI driller took that uh, go on us to go and replace all the softwares you need as an engineer. So you just use one single platform, unified. So what is the Agile? It's a directional software, which replaces, you know, Hawkeye, Compass. It's a well planning software, replaces little plan, well plan stuff. We also engineering software, replacing landmark systems, replacing Schlumbers and drill plans, and uh, reporting. This is a huge portion too. Like we automate a lot of reporting, replace the system like open wells, well view, and everything else. And we also analytics thing. Uh, you probably will bring up today on you know what analytics and comparison. And for us, is when we say replaces, we need we need to build ten x better system for each of them. Yeah. And uh, this is what we kind of been known in the industry for as taking the hard tasks, not the visual tasks or building system we call ourselves operational platform we're not a app stores or like analytic system solutions we are platform like our users use us daily yeah yeah dealers down operation stops yeah and this is how you know we go from from that side so both of you guys uh directional drillers and former former lives uh marat you're from russia um you went to Work for Slumberjay, I believe. Yeah. Um, that's how you got into the oil field, Richard. Uh, you've done a lot of work um, around the world, but you know, mainly, mainly in the Permian. Uh, you know, funny, funny story from Richard. He came to our energy tech night out in Midland, and afterwards, he uh, he, he sent me a message. He's all right if I say the message. Oh, yeah. All right, he oh, sent, yeah. sent me a message on <laughs> LinkedIn. He's like, "Man, I came out to your energy tech night. It was awesome." He's like, "It's about time oil and gas gets the stick out of its ass." And I was like, "I, I knew I was gonna like this dude <laughs> from, from from that from that message." And it was so like, like BFFs, so yeah, like BFFs. And so I really Clicked. enjoyed getting to know you guys and and hang out with y'all. Um, but what I really appreciate y'all about y'all is you know y'all come from the field and. You're very um, uh, in tune with the operational challenges that are out there in, in drilling and in completions. And so, uh, Marat, why don't, you, why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, one another thing. I'm throwing, I like throwing out fun facts is Marat is a uh, judoka. He's trained judo a lot of his life. So he's going to take me to Dagestan and we're going to go <laughs> grapple. This is uh, you need to make a podcast from there. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to, yeah, we're going to go, to, we're going to go vlog and uh, talk about it. But, um, so you grew up, uh, hold on. You didn't finish. You're going to go grapple. What? A bear. I remember the whole story. <laughs> a bear. Yeah. That's a, I told him, I was like, I want to go to Russia, but you know, with the war right now, I can't. I said, like, well, there's this bear over there that I follow on Instagram. You can go grapple with it. And so, so after the war, you know, I'll, I'll go do that. But um, but Colin but, mentioned he wants his kids to grapple the bear. Yeah, yeah not it's not just himself. me. I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, it's a rite of passage for my kids. <laughs> yeah, so they're going to go grapple the bear. Um, 
But tell us a little bit about um, how you got into the oil business, international work, and then I want to hear about how you guys met. Um, so start there because um, I'm interested in that. Yeah, so from a uh, uh, joint Schlumberger uh, round, I was 19 years old, just finished the master's degree at the time. And uh, my only employer in my life was a Schlumberger. And, uh, you know, all of my experience, all of the people I work with and travel internationally everywhere from Middle East, Asia, you know, like uh, North Sea, uh, Alaska, cycling, like, you know, North Slo every basin of US uh, as well. So it was, it was fantastic experience. And, uh, uh, you know, we met with Richard when I first, my first introduction into unconventional. You know, uh, coming into unconventional world with all this like deep water, ERD environment, I was a complete space cadet. You come in, it was 2014, right, Richard, 2014? Yeah, 2014, I think. So. I think yeah. we had I had started over there, Toxie, around 13. Those are the times when you, which bit do we run? I don't know. Yeah. You know, what <laughs> yeah. way do we put? More the better. You know, I mean, it was a, it was a really fun times, and uh, uh, Richard was our superstar in the rig, uh, on the rigs, and uh, you know, all the records he was setting up, and he was kind of my damn Richard setting the rigs or the the records. Yeah, it's a you know just out there making some hole man I, I, I come from like a you know i played college football had a scholarship and all that so i've always been really competitive yeah so that's something i brought to the oil field i'm sure plenty of guys have brought it but that's something i bring when i come you know i, I bring that competitive nature that yeah. spirit and you know getting on the rig and like getting a tool pusher involved getting the uh the floor hands involved making them want to break records making them want to you know move the rig faster all that stuff like kicking people's ass like that's what it's all about yeah so i love it you know, it's funny when we were drilling wells in 2010, you know, there's like 11,000 foot verticals and uh, like we really prided ourselves on drilling them twice as fast as the other rigs on our lease. And we also, they give us a $500 Visa gift card if we got it drilled within like, you know, 16 days. And you'd be surprised what I would do for a $500 Visa gift card. So that's yeah. all, that's like the, the competitive spirit. That's what I love about drilling because there's not a lot of places like in professional industries where you can be that competitive and and bring that spirit. So um, it's very important is what's missing right now in the industry. I feel like uh, it's very painful and like sad to see customers who like, uh, you got an engineer or like manager, they come just to spend a day. You know, I mean, they, we all show up at the offices three days a week now. And we come and just sit, you know, see when, when it's going to be done. Yeah. It's uh, painful, not just to watch, probably painful for the person as well of itself, like there is no fun involved. Yeah. You don't compete. You can compete not just with somebody. You can compete with yourself or previous well. Yeah. Compete with your next door engineer. Compete with the next door customer, you know, but... That just makes it all fun. Like we talk about gamified digital experience, it's useless. Yeah. Like competition needs to be on the level of culture inside the teams, you know, and yeah. make it fun. Software yeah. can help to score and yeah, it can help that. facilitate yeah, it, yeah. but it has but, to be something that's ingrained in the culture. Yeah. And and it's uh, you lose that competitive spirit, all performance doesn't matter what you do, it's just gonna go south, you know, from yeah. there. And uh, and this will kind of we, we try a lot with the implementation, and everything else to just kind of we can put a little bit of seed of that, you know, in the teams and that goes a long way, you know, in from yeah. the, those little things. Yeah. So you guys meet out in, you know, 2014 time frame, And then uh, when did the idea for AI Driller uh, come about and how did it come about? Came late, came like 2006, 17. So I finished Rice Business School in 2016 and uh, I really wanted to join the Owls Park. Because for me, I was that, that kid of, you know, 30 years old, uh, never worked for anybody else, only no drilling. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and that world, all my friends are from drilling, you know, I mean, all completions. Mm -hmm. And uh, going to Rice was kind of tremendous experience to learn. I didn't even know what con consultant means. <laughs> I didn't know what investment bankers do. You know, I mean, for me, mm -hmm. bank is, you know, chase, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, it was a fantastic experience, but uh, in the mid mid of the school, I re realized I don't want to become any of uh, those roles. And uh, I really like entrepreneurship. Like our professors, like Aldanto, they put that spirit in you. Like, hey, mm -hmm. man, there is uh, more things uh, can be accomplished. And uh, uh, yeah, 2016, we jo I joined Owls Park for Rise. And uh, so I had to uh, quit Schlumberger to do it. And then uh, we formed a first company, which come back to judo. 
I called it data judo. Okay. <laughs> I had no idea what we're gonna do. <laughs> I knew something with data, and we need to wrestle it. <laughs> and uh, I knew it has to be oil and gas because it's more fun when you understand the uh, what you're doing and understand the user mm -hmm. you use for. Mm -hmm. And we found that, and then uh, 2017 NOV came, and it was a big discussion on automation at the time. Yeah. So uh, AI Driller was a name of the project within Data Judo. Mm. So we wanted to build a first assistance for the rigs on predictive drilling for sliding and rotary Yeah. from that side. And uh, Shell got involved, and we got a, a Game Changer Awards. Ian and the, the whole focus in company early on was a truly uh, uh, automation. Mm -hmm. So we are competitive guys. We wanted to build the fastest rigs drilling, and you know, you know, it's almost like you know, click on the it's dream of every you know, like you click on it, it slides for you, it rotates for you because a lot of a lot of hype was around systems which didn't work, and this is how we you know we get to uh, the drilling world and uh, the what you know about AI driller today is a cloud based system, operational system, you know, like. The fastest growing system right now in industry, but uh, it's only started in COVID, like already past that. But first three years, we focused like Richard, you know, performance, performance. Mm -hmm. How can we dial in the little parameters controls on the rigs? Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, you know, the initial beginning of it. Yeah, it's there. pretty interesting because I think a lot of times the best companies start off as projects, and so it sounds like you know, the project here was Data Judo. It's like, hey, I want to do something around data, around oil and gas. And then you had AI Driller product that kind of sat under Data Judo. And um, you start finding product market fit through, you know, organic feedback loops through NOV and, and Shell. And so it's interesting to hear how the evolution uh, of that occurred because I love hearing that. It's like, hey, just be curious about something and just go start building and talk to people. And yeah, kind if you of focus feel... for a long time on one thing, like it will, it will do well. Just mm -hmm. like it's uh, not as much fun as everybody think. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Uh, it actually kind of fucking sucks. To be honest. <laughs> yeah. you know? But like it, it's like once you, it's almost like a drug once you get used to it. Like yeah, you can't do anything else, yeah. you know, from that. Side. Well, yeah. some, sometimes when you start a business, you you have this idea, and then like, and that's one of the things that really drew me to AI drillers. Marat's really good at taking the feedback of what people want, mm -hmm. not necessarily what he wants or what we want, right? Yeah. Sometimes a DD, I want, I want this thing, you know, I want this, you know, you driller, I, I want this thing. Yeah, and he's you know, drill engineer, he wants that thing, and you know, sometimes you lose sight of what people want, though. Yeah, you know what I mean. What yeah. what what needs to happen. For yeah. them, you know what I'm saying? Because like you got this one track mind, but like you need this, you need to talk to everybody. That's why AI drill, like when we go talk to people, like we sit down with them and we we ask them their pain points. We talk to them about, you know, how do you how can we help you? You know, like that's that's one of the biggest things that yeah that we yeah. do at AI Driller. And and one of the things I respect about him most is he's, you know, yeah, doing what people are asking him to yeah. do, not what he wants to do. Operating with them. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I started this way. It's uh, uh we were humbled. By COVID, like everybody else, uh, initially Agile was not about it. I was like rich performance. I wanted to drill the fastest welding. All the records with self with set and Permian for curves for, for intermediates. I wanted to push further, like where is the limit? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like all these practices from Fred Dupree, MSC, like automation. What's next? You know, like, we were excited about this little things makes us happy for no reason. And uh, you know, like and COVID, like when COVID hits, we went down in 100 plus rigs in the US. Yeah. So like automation was out of the question. Mm -hmm. We were at the time, we were fairly small. We were almost like, you know, a little less than 30 people at the time. I had like, uh, my funding was about to finish. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to investors and they say, hey, can you raise some money? Yeah. <laughs> um, they say, when, let's, let's wait till COVID is over. You know what I mean? Yeah. Come to customers, every project we were in like was canceled up because it was completely chaos in it. And uh, you know, and the people did not care anything about like what we wanted to do at the time, automation. This is like was useless for that those times because you have the best of the best. Wherever you can keep employed, if do it. You know, I mean like why bring in software? And what happened to this? The only good thing about that moment was you can talk to people. Because mm -hmm. everybody was just, like yesterday, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, any disaster comes in, 
it's easy to reach out. People will find time for you. Nobody yeah. takes them for lunch. Yeah. And this is what we did at that, uh, that time is uh, I told, look, guys, uh, we don't want to close. We'll survive. And, uh, but tell us where do we need to push. Mm-hmm. And from 2020, we haven't done one single task I want or any of the team want. Yeah. Everything driven by customer. Yeah. You know, and uh, because whatever they suggested us to do in 2020, this is what made us commercial. This is what makes humongous growth. Mm-hmm. And you see another customer using the same feature. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Because same type of user, same engineer suggested it. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah. from that point, like main focus was to truly understand what they want. Uh, we did not care at all, like if it's hard or not hard, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. anti-collision, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, one customer in Pyramid, a huge customer, they came to us and say, almost a joke. And they say, Marat, do anti-collision. We're going to pick you up. I say, let's, let's do it. So just to give you environment, for 20 years, nobody could match uh, well, uh, Compass in AC. Mm-hmm. Schlumberger, Baker, but everybody tried for two decades, failed. Even the very committees in the industry, Ishwa, failed. We didn't have choice, we needed to commercialize, you know what I mean? So yeah. <laughs> we just closed ourselves in, you know what I mean? And uh, three months later, first prototype, six months later, fully deployed system. And this is until today, probably one of the biggest features we sell internationally. And think and about this, yes. this dude never learned how to slide as a directional driller. <laughs> <laughs> it took him years to ch- try to figure out how to slide, but was able to create anti collision in three months. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Come on, man. But you know what's funny is, uh, but <laughs> these jokes, by the way, goes from 2014, and we continue <laughs> doing them. Yeah. And uh, it's still. Rod Sai Rich just beat the hell out of this joke <laughs> every time, every every chance I get. Well, you know what? But but there's something really nuanced there that you were talking about that I want people to pick up on. You said we had to do it because we needed to commercialize. And it's funny how startups can figure out how to do shit quickly because you have to out of necessity to survive and make money. And so like that, that almost having your back against the wall type mentality Mm -hmm. forces innovation. Whereas, you know, large companies with, you know, really smart people, you know, infinite resources, they can't figure out these things because it's it's not a life or death situation for them to to figure it out, right? So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, that's what I love about tech startups and, and innovators is that you figure out how to, like at DW, one of our core values, we have three core values. One of them is do more with less. And you just heard it right there. I think it's this like, has to be value for every company in the industry, operator, service companies, and everything else. Because same thing going back to competitiveness, you lose that sight. How can I do more with less? If you don't ask yourself this question every day, I mm-hmm. don't care, you're a drilling engineer, you're a drilling manager, you service company, you're a DD on location, mod engineer. How can I do, do more with less? Yeah. How can we achieve better results? If we stop asking ourselves, we're gonna be that industry which is gonna be like, nobody likes, you know, we just need to like ourselves and just like the performance we do. You, so you, when you fit, finish your two weeks on, you're proud. You, know, yeah. you go back to your yeah. kids, yeah. And you're like, man, I just did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And then you come back and you see the relief and he did worse. <laughs> like Richard and I, you yeah. give each other shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, you take out Richard's <laughs> He's like, after oh, Richard. Oh, man. Like, <laughs> Got to clean up after move Richard. Move a little bit. I'll was, show you, was there, a point, you know I mean? was there a point in the digital wild cutters uh, point in time when you guys had your back to the wall? Dude, like 20 times. Yeah. 100% wow. 20 times. Uh, you know, I think, uh, yeah, we could sit here and talk about that forever, but that's what I resonated with that point because um, when you have to deliver solutions to be able to commercialize and be sustainable, like it forces you to drive innovation. And so, yeah, there's I could go down a list of probably 20 times where I thought of that. And some of them are like super like primitive. Some of them are really advanced, like what, you know, what we've done with our AI, but, you know, talking about what we've done with our AI, it's been within customer feedback loops and just shipping really quickly and listening to people. And so um, I just think that's a necessity. Um, if And you know, the thing is too, is like when you started out with data judo, it's like you can start out with an idea, but 
there's probably a 98, 99% chance that your idea is off base somewhat. And so once you get out to the market and you start listening to people, people will start telling you what their pain points are and what they're willing to pay mm -hmm. for. And so you have to have that intuition to be able to pivot and move in that direct that direction. And I love that, you know, a customer comes to you and it's like, hey, we need this built. And it doesn't matter if it's been tried to be built for 20 years and everyone's failed at it. You figure out a way to do it because that's what's going to make your company <laughs> successful. And yeah. so um, there's just, and I mean, that that story is as old as time. I mean, that's what keeps startups going is that it's that it's that innovation and that that spirit, that pioneering spirit to be able to deliver shit that big companies can't. So I always call it riding the wave, riding the it's wave. It's like being a surfer on the wave. <laughs> yeah. man. You, you always, you never can get comfortable, you know, I suck at surfing. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that doesn't carry over to operating businesses. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just extra pressure. I mean, you, 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 you know, like you have pressure from all sides. Like everybody think like you are CEO of the company or you founder of the company, like yourself. Calling it. Main idea is, you know, you're not a main boss of the company, you have a board of directors, you have mm -hmm. investors, that pressure in front of them, some of them don't know when they're drilling. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, they, they want, you know, like performance, you know, certain things from that side. You also have pressure to make payroll because, you know, you're excited about your product the most probably in the world, you know what I mean? Uh, hopefully users share your excitement too. And, uh, you know, so you want to hire the best of the best. Mm -hmm. How do I retain them? How they can make payroll? You know, so you have that pressure. And all of them have families, and they believe and jump, jump, jump from the big companies because mm -hmm. they believe in that vision. You know, I mean, so you yeah. have a double pressure from that side. Yeah, like Richard moved from Wisconsin all the way to Midland. <laughs> yeah, man, you know I, I, mean? <laughs> I managed. I've been in the oil field for 19 years, almost most of it in West Texas, but I managed to stay the hell away from here for. 20 years living here and <laughs> here i am at the end in midland texas hey, it's crazy how strong the gravitational pull is of the black hole and the permian it, it <sighs> sucks you in and <laughs> so but you know no, i just it just shows to what i believed in you know what I'm saying? i saw the yeah the need and i saw the you know how the ai driller can bring not only you know the leadership on the rig counts but like to have a system and a platform where everybody can operate on it and now now not only have that competitive spirit, spirit out there but have good communication over here in the office and between the field like that makes a big difference because yeah even even people who perform make mistakes and sometimes it could have been caught by somebody so if you have more eyes on the on the prize like it's easier to catch little things that yeah it, it might be little but it can cost a, a, an operator millions of dollars well that's yeah in this industry yeah it could be a little oversight or miscommunication but that little yeah. mistake yeah <laughs> that's the big dollars and so mm -hmm. you know I, but i think that is like uh, i think that's what's cool uh about ai driller is that one like i said you know you guys come from the field and you understand the problem and it's easy to get excited about building solutions when you understand what it does for the industry and so i think that uh the best companies in the space and the in the oil and gas tech space are made up of oil and gas people that understand the problem you know very deeply and and inherently and marat to your uh to to your point is you know everyone's always like oh i want to be a founder and ceo and it's like you think like oh i don't have a boss it's like no you have a boss you have investors you have a board of directors um you know you have employees like the the pressure like you know, talking about like having a back against the wall, like I've been in, at, at points in DW several times where we couldn't make payroll or we had to, you know, cut, cut everyone's pay. And that fucking sucks. Like it fucking sucks to do that and, you know, can, can take a toll on you. And so a ton of pressure to, you know, not only perform for clients, you know, perform for investors, you know, employ, uh, perform for employees and their families. And so there's a lot that goes into it. And that's, the pressure that drives you to make innovative solutions because you're like we're just going to figure it out and people are telling us that they'll pay for it and we'll figure out how to build it and the bigger you are the it's almost I always say like the bigger the company gets you kind of moving it's almost like a different vehicle the faster you spend faster you drive you know what i mean and it's like yeah you, you better make sure because it's a different approach of getting bronco on the field you know what yeah I mean? and uh, getting ferrari on the highway yeah. right it's yeah. different type <laughs> style style uh doing it but I always say to people, if you want to feel that pain, just imagine like you have a mortgage payment to do and you can't make it this, like uh, right now, right now you have to be late. Yeah. 
now multiply amount by 100 times. <laughs> so, and exclude any ability to borrow from anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's just that, that kind of like moment of there. And yeah. uh, if it's a bank, it's a company. Payroll is your guy. Yeah. Guys who have your back every day. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and uh, so th those drives is good drives to yeah. push uh, on that front. And, uh, and, you know, going back to, you know, the hardship of 2020, I mean, look, it was doubly hard for people in oil and gas. You know, tech tech was getting wrecked, media was getting wrecked, oil and gas was getting wrecked. And so we actually went full time on digital wildcatters in March of twenty twenty. You know, I talked to investors, I talked to advertisers, I was like, Oh shit, we can we can commercialize this and then COVID hit. There were no investors, there were no advertisers. And so all of a sudden it's like, you know, but I had a deep belief that the best businesses are built in the depths of downturns. And if you can figure out how to navigate those and, and make it out, you know, it's going it, to coming out on the other side. It's not easy, but it's easier than what 2020 was. And so tell me a little bit about that. You know, you guys, um, you know, obviously the, the, the industry was wrecked. Um, you know, well, go, no go back before that. So for us, like, a. uh, you know, like when you, you, you're doing jujitsu, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, different pains, like, you know, the, your pain limit increases, right? Now and this level. is about to become super fucking meta here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, so uh, there's, there's, there's something my jujitsu coach tells me and tells our whole gym. He says, you're always two moves away from being bottom and back on top. And it teaches you to really deal with you know being under heavy pressure and just knowing that hey you're two moves away from being back on top and so um yeah great fucking reference there i, I talk about this often i mean jujitsu and judo wrestling a lot more than just learning about how to fight it teaches you how to navigate these high pressure environments yeah and for us it's like uh uh we were lucky to start getting this pressure early on <laughs> You know, I like I fucking uh, love that mindset. Like we're we're lucky, we were fortunate. So, uh, <laughs> you know, kind of mid reached 2014. By 2016, we set like nine records per man base in performance base. Everything Excel, just sitting on the rack and pushing, pushing. We went through every motor out there. You know, like and uh, got a lot of recognition from the customers. It was a bittersweet experience. It was like market was still shrinking, but we were growing like crazy. I was still at Schlumberger at the time. Uh, fast forward, you know, 2017, 2018, it's a, I call it like a dating experience with in, in, in a entrepreneurship. It's fun. You go meet customers, you meet investors, you talk about different things, you're trying to be smarter than you are, you know what I mean? It's a fun environment. Uh, in, so 2017, uh, start rolling the sleeves, uh, find a product. It's almost like you go and flirt with everybody, you know what I mean? Especially mm -hmm. being in Schlumberger, the only employer I had, you know what I mean? It's almost like your college sweetheart. Mm -hmm. So now you finish this and you're like, okay, everything sounds exciting. So then you find that one area you really love and that love has to happen because if you don't love your product, you're not going to survive through that pain. Mm -hmm. You're just going to, you know, it's too yeah. easy to just switch to something just and stop, then, yeah. in our industry you just go and find a very high paid job yeah you know what i mean like why even hustle yeah so and then uh, uh we found the agile and then the whole rolling sleeves and pain was tremendous <laughs> first patent game changer you know what i mean uh getting the first investors coming in everything excited we are on the cover of idc magazine mm -hmm. you know what i mean one side, we winner of Rice Energy Awards of the year 2017. Like a most promising startup, you know, like everything on the rise. Flying high. You're like, man, we made it, you know. <laughs> April, uh, big learning, sued by, you know, one of the big four. And I'm like, why? Too much noise. Mm -hmm. People get jealous of little things. You know, what I mean, and it's not a big company's go pursue. It's like somebody in there just felt not comfortable with something like that. This is exactly what it is. So there's another oil and gas tech startup out there that is now doing really well and successful. But when they first started, bootstrap company, uh, 
two founders were former uh, engineers from a major EMP, and that major EMP sued them. And what it came down to was there was a couple of employees at that major that were jealous. And I told these guys that. I was like, this is what it's going to end up coming down to is one of your former coworkers is jealous that you guys went off and were doing this and they're trying to make a, make an example out of you. And you know, that took them years to fight that legal battle and tons of money and more importantly, precious time and mental bandwidth. And so you guys having to go through this as well. Um, we didn't I mean, do multiple years. Uh, for me, it was like, we had the easy choice to just shut down the shop and open a new one, you know what I mean? Uh, and just completely dismiss it at the time. We were mm-hmm. not, uh, our product was not even proven. You know, we were working with big operators from that side. Mm-hmm. So like the question is like, do you back it up financially? That little dream you have, think about PowerPoint with little code. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And in a, in a lawsuit situation, because American, you know, legal system is great. If you did nothing wrong, nothing would be wrong with you. Mm-hmm. The only problem with that is expensive. Yeah. <laughs> think about every email is $10,000. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's almost like you're playing a chess and every move is $10,000. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So the first investor into the Agile was me. Mm-hmm. I came back because I couldn't risk anybody else's money. Mm-hmm. This is how we built a very good reputation in Houston. Uh, is a... Uh, we made sure that we, you know, because it's it's a huge company, its risk is high. We make sure we didn't put anybody on the high. Like we didn't hide anything from there. I was open about it. I didn't go public. I should have, if digital wildcatters would be there, we should have just <laughs> go and make a fun out of it. Yeah. Because uh, I needed somebody to talk. Yeah. Because now you're in the close yourself and you have a chess game, you know, yeah. an expensive chess game. Yeah. But it builds you, uh, you know, you have two options. You know what I mean? You stand up for yourself or you crumble. Mm-hmm. And that's it. We say, okay, I don't care how much it costs. I don't have my how much it will lose. Like, I mean, like, I want to prove that, you know, we are good. Mm-hmm. And uh, all the cash you submitted initially, within a few months, we were out. Everybody said, whoa, whoa, whoa what just happened? You know, like it's a, it's a David and Goliath story yeah. from that yeah. side, you know? But that pain in, like I would always, always tell people, those learnings when you're under pressure, it's much more concentrated business calls mm-hmm. across. Mm-hmm. And more of those you have, more pain tolerance, like your mm-hmm. metaverse coach mm-hmm. philosophies. You know, like, yeah. So by COVID, we already had, like there is nothing which cares us all. Yeah. When somebody says, Marat, nobody can build this engineering in three months, I'm like, you know I mean? Nobody can. Yeah. <laughs> there is a... There is not, 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 uh, nothing like uh, never or nobody, you know what I mean? Like it's mm-hmm. just, whenever somebody brings it up, it's already interesting. Yeah. You know, you- Let uh, us try, you know what I mean? You develop this pain tolerance and the scar tissue. Oh, and, yeah. And, you know, you learn a lot of things that they don't teach you in business school. And so the, the aggregation or the accumulation of those uh, experiences mm-hmm. makes you a better company and, and operator moving forward. And so- you guys get out of that, then you get hit up upside the head with uh, with uh, COVID, um, and you know coming out of COVID, I know it's funny you brought up you know digital wall catters and talking to us back then because I always got asked a lot of questions like, hey, have you heard anything about AI driller? Do you know any AI driller? And I always thought it was weird that we hadn't talked and that I didn't know you. I was like, shit, I don't know anything about AI driller. I don't know if they're legit or not. And I'm putting on the record, you guys are legit. And I fucking love hanging out with y'all and spending time with y'all. Um, like, seriously, I'm super energized by uh, talking to you guys. And so tell me a little bit about, you know, how you guys have grown the company. I know um, y'all work with uh, a lot of international, uh, you know, national oil companies um, and and have some clients over in the United States as well. But kind of talk about how you guys coming out of COVID uh, started taking off and, and commercializing the company. And COVID, COVID was a focus experience for us. We uh, get humbled by the environment. Uh, we had uh, no choice but perform, you know, and uh, we were lucky to be in front of right managers and engineers. It was like, craving for solution, like uh, what Agile is today. Mm-hmm. And uh, from my side is, uh, uh, that was so uh, 
pivotal like from learning because I always they told me right go to operations I'm like man there is so many systems analytics you know spot fires anything and they're like nobody gets it our problems are hard you know like it's uh, AC it's a uh, planning the well it's doing the program every day you know like you know w- nobody comes to this industry and it's what we love most from digital workers like there is no much excitement going on in the industry mm-hmm getting less and less competitive you know the mediocrity is a new norm mm-hmm. you know i mean like we're not a cool industry anymore mm-hmm. like who said it you know i mean like we are well cash with your energy tech nights events is probably coolest than any other industry you know what i mean mm-hmm. bring people together everybody talks we need to bring the excitement back in yeah you know and this is why from us we start working with the guys on 2020 and you build them the software you start delivering and uh, we start delivering the hard stuff and using our experience from 18s and everything else i didn't want to do much marketing i said look the last thing i want is to make another guy jealous all i want is the team to grow people get excited and i want to make sure that people who share the pain get the actual solution answer from us mm-hmm. so 2021 uh first customer a large company nobody could even imagine so we within first quarter of releasing the product we signed three large independent like we am talking about that uh we by end of the year we were across all basins in the us cool and uh that focus we did not change until today so for the last three years uh marat was not ceo on marketing channel Marat was not on digital wildcatters. Mm-hmm. Richard was not there. We are on the rigs. We have no marketing. We have no salespeople. We are there with the users every mm-hmm. day. If I feel tired or demotivated, I go and I hang out with the user for three days on the rig floor. Yeah. And that's what gives me wings. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not flying. Yeah. And uh, the whole growth, you know, the company, and we outgrow everybody today. It's done by one person talking to another. Mm-hmm. Hey, I actually like these guys. They actually teach me. They help me. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of our users have Marat as a AI uh, tech guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was always you know the CEO, mm-hmm. but you want to see the user. But I feel like we're a small company, and you're kind of like a little bit of uh, you don't want to give them CEO card. Yeah, <laughs> and I usually come like a uh, technician any further problems any questions i'll teach you up yeah <laughs> and they a lot of them used to ask me how do you like your company i said i love it but they, they asked me as the employee of agile they thought i'm a te- technician right yeah <laughs> how's management i say management is doing great management is fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> <Not> <laughs> and, uh, but it gave me that opportunity to be with them all the time yeah and uh now they don't know and uh, yeah, some of them, you know, give me shit on the SMS and hey, man, you should, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but that which relationship. Is, which is important because, you know, um, it's like I've had investors um, that, hey, if you were just some tech guy, we wouldn't be doing this, but you're oil field. And so that's like, that says something is when, you know, you blend in with, with your users because you are one of them, right? You understand their pain points. You understand what it's like to be out on a rig or out in the field and, you know, that's why, you know, no one from Silicon Valley can come build these types of things because, you know, you come from Silicon Valley and and um, you go out to rig, <laughs> you know, these, these, these people don't relate to you. You know, they don't, you can't find common ground with them. And so, um, you know, I think that that's, um, that's important. And it's like, you know, for me as well, you know, dude, I've got one of like the most unique networks in the world like i've got friends that are some of the biggest youtubers in the world i've got friends that are you know leading experts in ai and machine learning but then i've got friends that are out on rigs right now they're out on the wellhead and those are my favorite people to hang out with like i fucking love hanging out <laughs> with those people and so um uh, and and you know to to be able to have that background and that so how many set. years you spent on the, on the rig 10 a little under 10 so yeah i've spent two years roughnecking and then two years running wireline. And then, uh, yeah, when I ran expandable casing, I was boots on the ground on rigs as well. And so, um, it's funny when I was, when I was 
was a project manager for InVenture, which was a glorified tool hand. But, you know, I'd run these big uh, expandable casing projects and I'd go out to a rig and like, I remember this one driller asking me, or he was an uh, operator on a workover rig, we we're running some casing patch. And he's like, are you, uh, he's like, are you some petroleum engineer? I was like, nah, dog. I was <laughs> like, I broke out roughneck and came up the field and like immediately you could feel it. Like his respect went up a hundred percent, right? From no, even just a- like, no, I'm not an engineer. I'm a field hand. And so, um, you know, it, it's important when like, I, this has always been my, my thesis for oil and gas tech, not even just oil and gas tech, but any industry is like, you need 10 years plus of domain expertise in the industry that that you're building for um one to understand those problems deeply but two because people will respect you just like they respected you know like i love hearing that they thought you were some tech you know not not (laughs) the the founder ceo of the company like that that says something um like oh this guy knows his shit and he's been out in the field he's not some tech ceo rice mba grad i like i like i like bashing mbas so i gotta give Marat some shit for being a for no being i mean no, i was bushing myself <laughs> Think about like a, i'm sitting there like I, my, my my job at the time was operations manager you know i'm sitting in my class everybody's vice president of something yeah and i was like how did they get me you know, yeah. you know, did i make a mistake you know what i mean on the on the stuff but then uh, we started going through the you know the experience and management experience and i start going through org behavior you can see like you know the, there is organizations which everybody is vice president and there is an oil and gas organization when you know operations manager has 200 people underneath so it's you know like it's just very hard to compare and then i think you know only guys in ofs know so that's why we kind of pitch right now like there is no should be a shame like it's, a lot of times we hear oh we're oil and gas and almost people like apologetic about mm-hmm. no you should be fucking proud you should be absolutely proud. you've been in the field this is a big thing you yeah. know what i mean uh, we have one uh, customer from uh, middle east uh they came to our middle facility recently and uh our product manager carl he used to be roast about like yourself on the rig and they said let's go through experiences we have you know we sit in our lounge area there and uh carl director of product hey agile he's like hey, i'm a former roast about Guess what? I go and visit that customer in the Middle East. That's all they talk about. Yeah. Man, they have a product guy, <laughs> Rost about when yeah. he's coming. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the, those yeah. kind of things, yeah. you know? You know what's and, awesome? Uh, I had this uh, guy reach out to me on Twitter last month and uh, he said, Hey, man, he's like, I've worked in the oil field for eight years, uh, work on uh, compressors. He's like, I'm currently in a accelerated uh, master's program for computer of science uh, or for computer science. Um, he's like, Do you guys have any? internships available and i was like dude i will hire you on the spot and they got, got me this idea is like dude i would love foil filled hands you go to a coding boot camp or you go to computer science uh like you have an instant spot over at dw because just think about how base that is if you get all these uh these you know product managers or developers that came up through the field like that's that'd be fucking awesome yeah, so and then like have a five years from the rig you almost have a degree degree in life in relationships and everything because out there like you know you by yourself mm-hmm. office is doing office stuff it's you know few dudes trying to drill very challenging well or something like that Especially you, know you brought I mean? that up because i was just thinking about that a few days ago i think the thing that i'm most appreciative from the oil field is the ability to have critical thinking and think about like because like you're on a rig and something breaks down like especially back in the old days you know pre pre-shell like you're out there, just a group of five of you, and you had to figure out how to fix shit, right? And with very minimal resources or or tools, and um, you know those those skills really carry over to other parts and other parts in life. And so that's just something that that I've always taken away from the oil field. That, that especially if you're offshore. Yeah, and that one hour costs fifty thousand dollars, and it's yeah. on you. You know, yeah, I mean? like, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> get yeah. that little, little, little bit of pressure to yeah, yeah. get shit back up and running. It makes so. it it makes it difficult when you come like me being in the field almost your whole career, and then you come into like an office job, and people always want to ask questions and questions and questions, and sometimes it's like, God damn, man. Like, but let's talk about that a little. Let's out. talk about that a little <laughs> bit, man, because you know, there's a, a. This is the one thing is like, I really want to figure out 
how to communicate this and how to help people that are in the field but want to move to you know tech tech companies or more office jobs and that is a transition right like coming oh, yeah. you know coming from you know 10 15 20 years out in the field and then um all of a sudden you know like I, I think it's funny. I put out this post on Twitter the other day. I was like, hey, someone should let me come roughneck for a week and let me take video. I'll get you millions of views. And uh, Akita Drilling reached out to me like, hey, we'll get you out on a rig. And I was just <laughs> thinking about it. I was like, man, as a like 19 year old version of myself, I think I'm such a pussy right now. Like, I have soft hands. Like, I sit here podcasting and, yeah. and it, it, it's a change, right? Um, so let's talk about that a little bit, you know, like adjusting to that. But you know, the skills that you've taken from the field and how that helps uh, in, your, in your position in AI driller, because there's a lot of people out there that that would take some insight from that. So, you know, open floor to talk about the challenges and, and what's worked, what hasn't. Man, I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out, honestly. That's a, that's a very fair <laughs> answer, too. <laughs> I'm still trying. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to, there's times, you know, when I feel worthless, you know what I mean? Like I, I'm coming, I'm sitting in the office for a couple hours. I'm like, God, I just have that like itch. I have to get out to the rig. So sometimes whenever I get stressed out or I'm not liking the way things are going, I just head out to the rigs. You know, Dude, so that's, that's super kind of interesting, like, man. The, the sense of urgency that is fucking hammered into you in the oil field. Um, that is something that I have found that is very unique to oil field hands and you get out outside of the oil field and no one else has that sense of urgency um to to your point hey one hour costs fifty thousand dollars and so it almost drives like a sense of, of anxiety too sometimes because yeah. you feel like you should like you're like oh shit i've got to be moving and doing something so that's yeah really that's, interesting that's one thing i just haven't i don't know if i'll ever get used to honestly yeah but yeah i'm just trying to figure it out but i yeah. mean yeah i don't really have that's you know, trying to go out, do presentations, doing podcasts, traveling a lot. I mean, I've I've been in the office once before. I was a, a like a rotary steerable product line manager at, yeah. at Weatherford, so I I got to learn what to do and what not to do at that point in time. Rotary you steerable. know, pre yeah. presentation and stuff like that, which I hadn't been used to. <laughs> I, I get you know super anxiety and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I kind of learned a little bit there. Yeah. Um, and and have have brought that over here and but I, i'm honestly i just be myself and yeah. people like that yeah so I, I don't change who i am yeah and uh another uh advice to people is sometimes people come to the office and they think they've made it i was best in the field i'm this and that man you're starting all over here mm -hmm. like you got to come here and prove yourself now so you got to see the new challenge you can't like you can't just sit back and, and take it for granted i was the best here and that's what i did when i was in when i was at weatherford like i i thought since i was one of the best guys there best direction i went I didn't do a good job being an office guy. Yeah. I, I'll be honest. Like I did not do a good job. I could have done a, a much better job than I did. And so when I came here, I, 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 I took it as a, a new challenge and I was like, I gotta, I gotta kick this thing's ass. I love so that. So basically just know that you're restarting and you're learning new skills. I mean, I've learned so much like, and I got Denari here with me. He's the same like me. He's been in the field and he's learning so much and we're learning how to make videos and content, how to talk to people and how to, you know, listen to people's pain points and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Usually you're the guy that getting all the questions and yeah. now I'm the guy yeah. asking all the questions. So it's, it's difficult yeah. being a person, a listener. It's difficult because usually yeah. I'm a talker, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah. now I'm like <laughs> yeah. more of a listener, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, well, did you have a really high degree of self-awareness, you know, uh, understanding like, hey, I didn't do a good job at Weatherford and why did I not do a good job? And, um, you know, it, realizing that you have a new challenge and what you have to do and i'm going to talk you up here for a minute i mean the only reason that you guys are sitting here right now is because of you you know you you reached out to me and um you know put all the pieces of the puzzle together to to make it happen and so you know i i think the big thing that i want to take away though is that you know when you work out in the field you don't have to stay in this in this box you know like you look at both of you guys you know you've you've, you've gone on and and you're building cool tech products and doing this and so you know everyone always asks me too like well how'd you, how'd you go from you know roughnecking and working in the field to doing what you are now and it's about picking up new skills it's about building your network it's about exploring new ideas you know chasing your curiosity and so um you know i know there, there's people out there that'll be inspired by by y'all's story um and i think it's important to to tell those things because yeah one one of the things that helped me out now that i think about it you kind of sparked a memory of mine um you know i i I have a business of my own mm -hmm. that I started and I don't remember the year when everything went down, but I was working for Parsley as a directional driller mm -hmm. in house. 
and we got laid off. And I told myself, if I ever get laid off, at that point in time, I'd have been DDing for like 15 years. I said, if I ever get laid off, I'm fucking done. I'll never come back to this industry because I don't deserve to be laid off. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I got laid off. Never. <laughs> and I was like, never. shit. And he's still here. Yeah. Yeah. Look at him, man. Look, we went from, thir- we went from 30 so rigs. I was so lucky back. Yes. We, got, we went from 30 rigs to zero. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I went, started this business, did this thing, learned all this stuff about business. And that was the first time in my life I had my back to the wall. I mm-hmm. was a fucking lion. Mm-hmm. And man, I was just like, I was like, whatever it takes my family, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to fucking be great at what I'm doing. Did that, got the business up to about 700,000 revenue and it was kind of just going and me and Marat were like talking back and forth and that's when we came back to working uh, <laughs> together after the lawsuit. You know, that was a yeah, big yeah. deal. You know, they tried to come after me personally. Yeah. So I took that personally and it also scared the shit out of me at the time. <laughs> bet, so yeah. when Marat <laughs> says that like, at first he was, he was scared the whole time. And so was I. I was terrified. Yeah. I, just, she should be. Man, you got a $100 billion company coming after you. Yeah. You're scared. Yeah. And so the next time I saw him, man, he was completely changed. He was like, I don't even want to talk about that no more. I don't care. I'm not worried about it no more. He's like a changed person. Like he literally was not scared of it anymore. And I can see that. And that, that, that gave me that confidence too. But yeah. That's awesome. So like going. And then he was able to convince you to come back into, into the industry. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. I missed, honestly, I missed well, in the, the competitive guys spirit. like Richard. And yeah. then for me, it's like, it's the most painful job of me if I go see the office, right? And we come and say, well, let's, you know, we don't talk about AI drill at all. Mm-hmm. So what do you guys do? What's the plan? What's the vision? Let's look at the operation. Like, what's your challenges are, right? And they're like, oh, you're an analytics company. You know, like, it's almost like we uh, right now cannot even mention analytics because we get compared to, like, all kind of stuff, you know? Mm-hmm, I mean? mm-hmm. And it's because uh, as an industry, we've done so, such a poor, poor job on, on software. Like, a lot of systems came in very hyped up. Mm-hmm. So people get to, like, jump on them use it for a little bit, either dropped using it, stop using it at all. Mm-hmm. When it comes to the field, field, never even like look at it, you know? And yeah. uh, we have a, people would use one or two apps, you know, from uh, that perspective. And whenever you come to, as an analytics company, you know I mean? You, people are like, what is exactly it's do? You know what I mean? And people lost trust completely. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of the biggest things uh, from there now you go against two biggest pressures of the industry. One is like, nobody trusts analytics or software company. Because everybody thinks all the things promised, nothing delivered. Mm-hmm. This is why like a lot of times when young guy comes to you, you hire the best company man or best DD from one area just to bring to your rigs. He's like, man, I'm coming, but yeah, hey, Jula goes with me. Mm-hmm. I need this as my operational tool I use. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, that kind of look helps us to overcome that pressure. But the biggest thing is for me is you have all the systems in the world. You have all data in the world. We are drilling slower and more expensive than we did two years ago. Mm-hmm. Of course, inflation, everything else push up, you know what I mean, from mm-hmm. that side. But like, what's our uh, break even in, in permanent right now? You know, it used to be 50, we were happy with this, right? Mm-hmm. With inflation, 50 is a new 70. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, uh, What's oil trading right now? I mean, I, I, what, I honestly 80, haven't. Eighty dollars? Yeah, I have no right? Eighty bucks, give or take. Yep. We as a drilling and completions as operational guys, we cannot afford mediocrity right now. Mm-hmm. You know, something gonna happen. We're gonna go all over again, firing. You know, I mean, laying off and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, like we are not in a. 50% margin right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, mm-hmm. Of course, some of the inflation will go, get down and everything else, more projects going to open up. Gas is not looking very good too. Yeah. So the goal for us, all of us right now, the patient people, how can we kill it? Because mm-hmm. we know exactly how much we're going to produce. Mm-hmm. How can we reduce cost? The only way to do it is just to get guys like Richard, anybody back, give them freedom. Hey, give me something faster. Yeah. 11 days, you could have done nine. Yeah. That guy will be, you know, waking up at night, going to floor, make sure it's good. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Th- that's, this is why when you're looking at people who just come to make a paycheck, those companies, you know, like, is only there mm-hmm. until the next, you know, yeah. oil and gas bump. Yeah. 
It's so it's so hard to motivate some of these these people, man. It's, it blows my mind. No, for sure. Um, yeah, like like you doing jujitsu, right? Think about somebody brought the kid against his will. Mm-hmm. He's there every day. Like, doesn't want to yeah. do anything. You know what I mean? Like some people, some people have intrinsic drive, and some don't. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, but the idea like uh, uh, if you start training them up, and it uh, doesn't matter against you will or not, the kid, if you have a great coach, great people around and you push performance you ask them compete Mm -hmm. the kid will turn around Mm -hmm. but if you just you know not coach them let them play on their own you know they were going to be kids yeah and that's what the industry industry the moment we stop pushing performance the moment we stop asking more from engineers to do we're not going to attract high talent Mm -hmm. you know i mean we're going to be like waiting until next uh you know, downturn, so we fire everybody, mm-hmm. and we'll be companies uh, just for acquisition, or like you know, whatever yeah. assets you have, somebody's gonna come eat you. Yeah. So main way way to make strong is every company right now, especially non-conventional, needs to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. And it should be a mindset from roast about to the VP. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I love that. I love that messaging. Uh, you know, bringing com- competitiveness back to back to the to, to the industry, and you know, just that that uh, internal de- desire to to win. So, I love that. Um, you know, wrapping this up. If people want to reach out to AI Driller, um, where can they find y'all? I know y'all are getting set up on Collide, so they can go over to the Collide yeah. Tech database here soon and. Uh, find y'all's profile over there. Find this podcast. What's uh, what's y'all's website? Um, tell people where they can find y'all. AIDriller.com. AIDriller.com. Yeah. That's pretty pretty easy. And also hit us up. We we communicate a lot on LinkedIn as well. Yep. Uh, Richard's myself, over, Richard's Mariah, over on LinkedIn. Got, uh, so Carl, Charmaine, cool. Denari. We got a bunch of people. So just cool. hit us up on LinkedIn. You'll well, see us around. Uh, put out links to the show notes uh we'll also link out over to their profile on collide um and also come see us on energy tech nights yes mm-hmm. yeah you know what i mean and That's uh right. richard's been making the been making the tour he was at midland uh did you come to houston i did not you weren't at houston no. okay um uh, was at fort worth this week so um and i also would, uh, would uh, recommend to reach out to your jeweler through collide yes test collide up because collide should know everything about oil and gas Absolutely. So you yeah. should definitely know about AI Driller by now. Yes. You know I mean? yes. So <laughs> I encourage everybody to go sign up and check. Awesome, man. Um, really excited about what you guys are working on. Um, I'm excited that I know who AI Driller is now. Uh, seriously enjoy uh, talking with uh, you guys, not just you two, but uh, the entire team uh, that I've met up to this point. So uh, if you're listening right now, highly recommend uh, reaching out uh, to AI Driller and talking about their solutions. And if you enjoy this show, make sure to share it with a friend and we'll catch you on the next episode. Yeah, and I have one, I have one more thing. One more thing. So, Rich um, has one more thing. <laughs> on Tuesday in Midland at AI Driller, we'll be having a uh, well bore stability class with um, Kay Jackson and Pete Stetson at Deep Energy. Oh, cool. They're going to be basically going over well bore stability, you know, what to do. This coming how Tuesday? To, how to prevent it, how to trip in and out of hole. Yep, this this Tuesday okay, cool. coming up. So We'll try to get it's this. A, it's a great class. We'll try to get this episode pushed out by then so that that people can hear it so cool yeah if you're in midland uh check that out that sounds cool um and we'll post some we'll post some uh info on it sweet thanks so cool all right we'll catch y'all on the next episode